Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy, in their spacesuits on a tiny asteroid, are approaching a criminal who has stolen evidence that's needed to convict a crime syndicate. He's got the metal box, sir, with the evidence. All right, Chura, come out of that crater and get into our ship. I'm getting into my own ship, Corey, and you're not going to stop me. All right, we'll come down and get you. Take one more step and I'll use this gun on you. All right, have it your own way. I I warned you. Drop, Happy. Wow, that was close. That ray gun knocked a hunk of rock loose as big as your head. Don't move, Hap. I think Chura means business. He sure does. And it isn't funny business either. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Search for Asteroid X. Hey, did you hear that, gang? That was the Terra Express train trying to get up speed on ordinary fuel. Not very speedy, was it? But now listen to that same train with super fuel in its tank. Man, that train is really traveling now because it's supercharged with super fuel. Now, gang, without a good breakfast, you can't go very fast either. But with super fuel in your tank, you're supercharged. Here's how Buzz Corey gets up ahead of steam in the morning. He has a good breakfast with Rice Chex or Wheat Chex, the super cereals that helped us supercharge you. For taste, they're terrific. For size, they're perfect because they both have that modern bite-sized design. So, gang, get off to a quick start of the morning the way Buzz Corey does. Get supercharged. Just eat a good breakfast with the checkerboard super cereals and get them today in the red and white checkerboard packages. Rice checks, wheat checks. After months of careful investigation, Space Patrol agents have gathered evidence against the leaders of the notorious Saturn Syndicate. This gang, for months, has been victimizing honest businessmen on the outer planets of the solar system. Commander Corey has been awaiting the arrival of an agent with the evidence that will convict the leaders of the syndicate. Now, Buzz grimly enters his central office on Terra, where Cadet Happy is decoding spacegrams. Lock those messages in the file, Happy. You can work on them later. Well, is something wrong, Commander? Well, it certainly is. I've just received a report that Fraser's in the hospital. All the evidence is gone. What? Somebody jumped Fraser while he was on his way here in a surface car. He was knocked unconscious. Every scrap of evidence was stolen. Documents, microfilm, everything. Do you have any idea who did it, sir? No, I understand the doctors won't let our security people see Fraser yet. Is he badly hurt? Fortunately, no. The loss of that evidence puts us right back where we started three months ago in the Saturn Syndicate investigation. Come on over to the hospital with me. As soon as the doctor's okay, I don't want to ask Fraser some questions. Cut your speed and go lower on me. I think I see something down there. Where? Right near that small pond. Uh, isn't that a building of some kind? Hey, you're right, Chura. Well, I hope it's occupied. Say, uh, there is a man down there by the pond. That's surprising to find anybody in this part of Mars. Set the ship down. We'll load up with food and water. Suppose this guy won't give us any? Well, then he'll get what our friend, the space patrol agent, got. Do you think you finished that guy, Chura? Who cares? We got the evidence. Yeah. But I won't rest easy until we get it hit on Asteroid X. Well, kick on the repeller ray. Repeller ray on. Well, we're down. If we get enough supplies here, we can go into free fall near the asteroid belt till we decide what our next move is. I wonder who this guy is. <laughs> he sure must like solitude. Now, we don't want any trouble if we can help it, Hundley. Let me do the talking. Don't you always? <laughs> all right, all right, let's go. Now the outer hatch. Hi there! Uh, he looks good-natured and not very bright. Just what we ordered. Uh, hello, friend. Having trouble with your ship? 
No, but we're out of supplies, yep. food and water. When we left Lowell City, we thought we had enough to get to Neptune, but looks as though I miscalculated. Well, I got plenty here, gentlemen. Come on in, take what you want. We'll pay you for it. Oh, no, no, I got plenty. Come on in the house and help yourselves. All right, that's mighty generous of you, Mr. Uh... Noonan. Marty Noonan. By the way, I don't believe I got your names. You know, I'm Steve Chura, and this is my friend Wally Hundley. Now about those supplies. Oh, sure. Sorry, you folks are in a hurry. But uh, since you are, just come with me, gentlemen. I brought this extra box of rations, gentlemen, just in case of emergency. Here, I'll pass it up to Chura. All right, Hundley. Come aboard. Hey, uh, sure wish you fellas could stay a while. Don't get many visitors. So do we, Mr. Noonan. But we got to get going. Well, I understand. Well, very much obliged, Noonan. Oh, no trouble at all. So long. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. Better stand back and watch our rockets. We're going to blast off. Yeah. Sure, a couple of swell fellas. Gee, what's this? Little box. Oh, they must have dropped it. Uh, uh, hey, wait! Oh, this looks pretty important. Microfilm Reel 14B Property of Space Patrol. Investigation Squad Number 3, Space Patrol Headquarters, Terra. Gosh, they're space patrol agents. I'd better call headquarters right away. Commander, will you take the space phone call? It's something about a can of microfilm a fellow found on Mars. All right, Happy. Corey here, go ahead, please. Commander, my name is Noonan. Yes, Mr. Noonan? A couple of your agents dropped a can of microfilm on my land. Uh, wondering how to go about returning it. Well, what does it say on the label? Real 14B Investigation Squad Number 3. Oh, just a minute. You say space patrol agents dropped it? Yes, sir. I think it fell out of one of the men's pockets. Happy. Squad 3 was on the Saturn Syndicate case. Mr. Noonan, what were these agents doing on your land? They ran out of supplies on the way to Neptune. Did you see their credentials? Uh, no, I didn't. Just figured they were agents when I found the film. Said their names were Steve Chur and Wally Hundley. Did you ever see these men before? Why, no, Commander. Where are you now? At my place. Uh, sector 17H on the Martian Plain. Uh, about four and six tenths DUs directly northwest of Little City. Got that, Happy? Yes, sir. What kind of a ship did these men have? Was it a space patrol ship? No, didn't have any insignia at all. But I don't know what kind it was. Mr. Noonan, hold on to that microfilm. I'm coming after it. Right, Commander. And don't give it to anyone else. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thanks for your cooperation. I'm on my way. Corey, out. I've just checked, sir. We don't have any agents named Chura and Hundley. Not on Squad 3, anyway. Well, chances are those are the men who knocked out Fraser. At least they have the evidence. Or I should say, had it. But Fraser didn't get a look at the men who attacked him. Well, I'll blast off from Mars and get the film happy. Maybe we can get some more information from this man, Noonan. I finished decoding the patrol unit messages, sir. Good. Will you read them, Happy? Yes, sir. Quote, the commander-in-chief aboard Terra 5. Jupiter Patrol searched Mars to Neptune orbit. No suspicious craft sighted. Unquote. From Saturn Patrol, same, negative. Neptune Patrol also replies a negative. Any more? Well, patrol ship 34A, asteroid belt picked up an unidentified object in their view scope. They're investigating it. Happy? We're going right into Lowell City. And how about the microfilm at Noonan's place? Now, you can go after it in an atmosphere ship after we land. I'll call Noonan, describe the credentials you'll present to him to relieve him of my original order. All right, sir. See how much you can find out about those men he saw. Get a full description. Very likely their right names aren't sure and Huntley. It's almost certain they lied when they told Noonan they were going to Neptune. Shall I bring Noonan back to Lowell City? If you think he can give us any useful information. Yes, sir. I'll, uh... We'll reach Mars in 20 minutes, sir. I'd better check Lowell City Space Control. Better get the evidence ready. We're nearly to Asteroid X. All right, sure. <laughs> what a terrific place to hide it. Even if somebody knew it was on an asteroid, how would they know which one? Uh, and I remember, Hunley, when we get to the asteroid, be sure to mark the exact universal star time to the tenth of a second. Why? Well... Otherwise, the orbit computer can pinpoint its location when we want to find the asteroid again. Yeah, yeah I get it. Have you got the evidence ready to unload? Yeah, all except... Uh-oh. What's the matter? A reel of microfilm. I had it in my pocket. It's gone. Huh? Uh, what was it doing in your pocket? That spilled out when we took the stuff from the agent's surface car, so I just stuck it in my pocket. Oh, well, probably doesn't matter. What do you mean, it doesn't matter? That reel might be just the one to convict the boss. And us... How did you happen to lose it? I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. 
back at noon. Huh? Yeah, I may have fallen out while I was bending over to pick up the box of food or water containers. Eh, how could you be that careless? Well, at least noon is alone. We got to go back and look for it. There is nothing else to do. Hi there. Are you Marty Noonan? Yep, that's right. Uh, I'm Cadet Happy. Here are my Space Patrol credentials. Mighty glad to know you, Cadet. Commander Corey called me about you. Oh, and uh, here's your microfilm. Oh, thanks. Uh, there are several questions Commander Corey wanted me to ask you about these men. Chura and Hundley? Well, I'll tell you what I can. Suppose we go in the house and have a bite to eat while we talk. All right, fine. It's a mighty fine-looking little atmosphere ship. How fast will she go? Oh, probably 1,200. On this trip, though, I averaged about 832. From the old city to here, nine minutes and 54 seconds. Hey. Yeah, about that. Let's see. Uh, I took off at... Hey, how did you figure that out so quick? Oh, I don't know. Answers just sort of come to me. Don't have to think about it. It's lucky, too. Because if I had to tell you how I do it, I'd get all confused and come up with the wrong answer. <laughs> I have to figure everything out on paper or use the electronic computer in the ship. Well, first, Mr. Noonan, uh, can you give me a, a description of these two men? Well, Chur is about 45, 6 feet tall, weighs about 210 or standard. Well, Mr. Noonan, you've given me a very complete description of these crooks, and their ship was very likely a Class C private cruiser from the way you describe it. Uh, could you come to Lowell City with me, Mr. Noonan? I think Commander Corey would like to question you further. Why, of course. I'd like to get back as soon as possible. Uh, do you mind if I use your space okay, phone? Okay, Noonan. Uh, you two cadet, get your hands out. Sure, and Hundley. That's right. Don't make a move for your gun, cadet, or I'll use this one. Okay. Which one of you has the microfilm? What microfilm? You know what microfilm. Noonan must have found it or you wouldn't be here. Hundley, take the cadet's ray gun and search him for the tape. Sure. The film's in my jacket pocket, and it's going to stay there. Oh, you want to play rough, eh, Cadet? You let him alone. You keep out of this, Noonan. Sure, uh, uh, help me. All right, I'm coming. All right, Cadet. I nearly got the gun away from me. Well, after this, don't be so careless. I got him. Here's the microfilm. Now, right, let's get back to the ship. Oh, oh. Uh-uh. The cadet's oh. coming, too. And I got an idea. We're going to take him with us. What for? Let's finish him here. Oh, not till we find out how much he knows. Come on, cadet. Come on, on your feet. You got a nice long walk. Walk? Where to? To our ship. What about Noonan? Oh, that's stupid oaf. Leave him here. Smash his spacer phone. And the one in the cadet's atmosphere ship as well. Okay. Where are you going to take me? Never mind. But I'll tell you this much. You better enjoy it because this is the last trip you ever gonna take. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Gang, this is Space Patroller Dick Tufel, and boy, am I excited. We have a new machine here at Space Patrol headquarters, and it's terrific. It's the flavor meter for testing the flavor of food. Now, I have a plain, ordinary cereal right here, so let's test it. The better it tastes, the louder it'll ring the bell. Now, all I do is place the cereal in this slot and push the button. Hmm, not much flavor there, is it? Uh, let's put in some other ordinary cereal and see what happens. Why, not even a tinkle. Now, gang, here's a couple of uh, super cereals I'd like to test. I'll put them both in. Wow, that did it. Those cereals really ring the bell for flavor. You bet. They were rice checks and wheat checks. Checks, the cereals with that modern bite-sized design. Checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. Test them yourself, gang, in your own cereal bowl. And believe me, they'll really ring the bell for flavor. Rice checks, wheat checks. <laughs> Commander Corey has sent Happy to Marty Noonan's isolated dwelling on the Martian plain to recover some stolen evidence, a roll of microfilm. Noonan and Happy were surprised by Chura and Hundley when the thieves returned for the film. After smashing Noonan's space phone, the criminals have taken Happy to their ship, leaving the unconscious Noonan locked in his house. Meanwhile, Buzz, in Lowell City, has tried in vain to contact Happy or Noonan by space phone. Commander Corey to Space Patrol, Lowell City. Space Patrol, Lieutenant Barton here, Commander. Lieutenant, 
I've been unable to contact my cadet on any of the space patrol frequencies. And Noonan doesn't answer either, so I'm blasting off to see what the trouble is. Would you like an atmosphere ship, sir? No, a spaceship in case I need it. I'll go in Terra 5. Keep monitoring those frequencies. If you hear from either Cadet Happy or Marty Noonan, notify me in my private frequency immediately. Hello there. Are you Marty Noonan? Yes. I'm Commander Corey. Where's Cadet Happy? Sure, and Hundley. They took him away, and they got the microfilm. I tried to stop him, Commander, but they knocked me out. They smashed my space phone and, and the one in the cadet ship there, too. Do you know where they took him? No, by the time I came to and broke out of my house, they'd blasted off. They'd locked me in. Did you hear anything that would give us a clue as to where they were going? No. All I remember was that one of them said we ought to be able to get there by 1,500 hours, but I don't know where they meant. How long ago did they blast off? About an hour and a half ago. Say, uh, Commander, I'd like to help you find them. All right, come aboard. Thanks, Commander. Maybe with the astrogation charts and the computer, I can figure out an approximate radius of where Chura's ship might be by 1,500 hours. Well, if they're going to any planet, it'd have to be Jupiter. Well, why do you say that? Well, considering the speed of spaceships and the present positions of the planets, and the approximate arrival time of 1,500 hours, it uh, just has to be Jupiter. Oh, it does? Yes, it wouldn't need that much time to get to any of the inner planets like Earth and Venus... And they'd need much more time to get to Saturn. You may be right, but as a double check, I'll work it out on the computer. The computer will give us the answer in a few seconds. Here we are. Let's see. What do you know? What would you say, Commander? Mr. Noonan, this is amazing. Either you made a very lucky guess, or you must know the exact distances and positions of all the planets relative to Mars. Oh, I do. I make a hobby of remembering data like that. Jupiter comes nearer to satisfying the equation than any other object in space. How do you do it? I don't know, Commander. If I know a formula and the data, I can get the result. But if I stop to think how I do it, I get all confused. There's only one thing wrong. They couldn't quite reach Jupiter by 1500. Of course, they may be heading for one of the moons. I'll check the astrogation chart again. Could be Ganymede, Commander, assuming we're right on the time factor. Yeah, we'll see. Mr. Noonan, you've hit it again. The astrogation chart puts moon number three, Ganymede, very close to the vector. Ganymede's a good-sized moon. There are a lot of places to hide on it. The most we can hope for right now is that we're headed in the right direction. I just talked to the boss. What'd you tell him? Just that we got the evidence against the gang away from the space patrol. And that we're on Ganymede. And the boss is going to stay on Saturn now that he's safe from prosecution. How long do we stick on Ganymede? Uh, until the excitement over, the stolen evidence dies down a little. Say, where's the cadet? All right, sitting over there. He's gone. I told you to watch him. Uh, the space phone. Look in the next room, quickly. And I'm being held on Ganymede, Sector 9J. Hey, Should get away from that space phone. Grab Ganymede, him on this. Sector 9J. Hey. I'll teach you, cadet. Now, watch him after this. That was happy. He was cut off. Sounded to me like somebody hit him. Sector 9J. That pinpoints location, Mr. Noonan. We'll make a slow glide approach and land with the repeller ray. Maybe Chura and Hundley won't hear the ship. <clears throat> All right, cadet. We could keep this out for hours, but I'm tired of playing games with you. Does Commander Corey know who knocked out the space patrol agent? Now, come on, answer me. Oh, you're wasting your time, Chura. I'm all for getting rid of the cadet right now. After that space phone call he tried to make a while ago, he's too much of a risk to have around. I'm afraid you're right, Hundley. We'll take him away from the building and use the ray gun on him. Now, let's get at it. Get your hands up, you two. Corey! Commander, you got here just in time. Mr. Noonan put me on the right track, then we heard your space phone call. Chura, where's the Saturn Syndicate evidence? It's where you'll never find it. They put it on an asteroid, sir, somewhere in the asteroid belt, but I couldn't tell you which one. There are thousands of them. I'll untie your hands, cadet. Oh, thanks. Look out, Noonan. Too late, Corey. Shoot, Commander. I can't. He's holding Noonan as a shield. So long, Corey. Are you all right, Noonan? I'm sorry, Commander. That's okay. After him, quick. He's locked the door. Hundley, have you got a key to this door? Sorry, Commander. Chura has the only one. Search him. I'll see if I can smash the door. I've got my hands loose now, Commander. I'll help you. All right, Happy. 
Can't find a key on him, Commander. Just this slip of paper. Uh-oh. It's Chura's ship. He's getting away. <laughs> well, we still have you, Hundley. Hey, Mr. Noonan, don't throw that paper away. That's the coordinates of the asteroid. Oh, all right, you did. I'll hang on to it. Once more, Happy. <laughs> the door's giving. <laughs> ah, there she is. Escort our friend Hundley to the ship. Come on, let's get after Chura. No sign of Chura's ship in the view scope, sir. Hundley, you must know where he'd be most likely to go. Really, Commander, I haven't the slightest idea. Probably heading for that asteroid to pick up the evidence. Mr. Noonan, let's see that piece of paper. Here it is, Commander. Yes. His coordinates are for a point somewhere in the asteroid belt. Yes, sir, but the asteroid has moved thousands of DUs by now. Yes, but the time is down here to the second. Oh, you mean the time the coordinates were taken? Yes. So by using the computer, we can tell just where the asteroid will be at any future moment. Commander, look at Hundley. Hey, get away from that computer! Get him, Happy! Uh, All right, Hundley. Quiet down or I'll knock you cold. Look what he did to the computer. Put it completely out of commission. Yeah, now let's see you find Asteroid X. Well, what are we going to do, sir? We can't possibly locate that asteroid until we get another computer. I know. There are thousands of asteroids in that belt. Um, Commander, can I see that piece of paper? All right, Mr. Noonan. Mm, 16 degrees, 23 minutes, 7 seconds. Sun Arcturus orientation, 123 million DUs from Sun Center. Commander, I think I can give you the approximate location of that asteroid. You can work out that orbit equation in your head? Already have, sir. If you show me an astrogation chart, I'll mark down the coordinates. Smoking rocket. That's impossible. Nobody could solve an equation like that so quickly. Not in his head. I've seen Mr. Noonan work, Hundley, and I think you're in for a surprise. Here's a chart, Mr. Noonan. Center that asteroid in the viewscope, Happy. Yes, sir. The approximate location you gave us, Mr. Noonan. The question is, is that asteroid X? Yeah, there are hundreds of asteroids in this region. Yeah, but look, there's a spaceship circling it. Hey, it's going to land. Mr. Noonan, it looks as though you pinpointed the right one. Sheer sure luck. Increase our velocity, Happy. You may be able to catch Chura before he leaves the asteroid. Yes, sir. Mr. Noonan, will you go to the locker and get a couple of spacesuits for Happy and myself? Sure will, Commander. When we land on the asteroid, I'll leave you in the ship to watch Hundley. There's Chura, sir, in that small crater. We'll set down between him and his ship. Cut rockets. Rockets out, sir. Hit repeller ray. Repeller ray on, sir. Landing secured, Commander. All right, Happy. Let's get out there and grab Chura. Mr. Noonan, here's a ray gun. Hold it on our friend Hundley. Very happy to, Commander. He's got the metal box, sir, with the evidence. All right, Chura. Come out of that crater and get into our ship. I'm getting into my own ship, Corey, and you're not going to stop me. All right, we'll see about that. Now, take one more step and I'll use this gun on you. I warned you. Drop that. Oh, that was close. That blast knocked loose a hunk of rock as big as your head. Next time, I'll widen the angle, and I won't miss. Shall we rush him, sir? Don't try it. Move one inch closer, Corey, and you're finished. There's nothing we can do. Back to the ship, Happy. Yes, sir. Well, Commander, isn't there any way we can get him? Just get into the ship. Close the hatch. Yes, sir. Well, he can't hold out there very long without food and water, sir. Do we just wait? He'd have to give up eventually. But he destroyed the evidence before he surrendered. I guess there's nothing to do but blast off. Turn your transmitter signal to low output so Chura can't hear us. Yes, sir. All set. Hey, Commander, he'll have to pass right by this hatch to get to his own ship. Yes, there's one weapon that might work. Right here in this container. Liquid air. But but how... Is... Unfasten the bracket. Well, yes, sir. Now, as he passes the hatch, open it as quickly as possible. And I'll open the valve and the nozzle. We'll squirt a jet of liquid air at Chura. But what good will that do? Is the pressure strong enough to knock him down? No, but the temperature out there in that asteroid is minus 240 degrees. Liquid air freezes at minus 218. Yeah, but I still don't see... There he is. Open the hatch, Happy. Quickly. Good shot, sir. It's hitting him. I'm trying to spray it over his hand. Hey, Corey, what are you trying to do? Fight with a water pistol? There, I got his hand. Turn it off, Corey, or I'll put a blast charge into your ship. Well, I I can't raise my arm. That's right, Chura. Your gun hand is encased Uh, in a mass of frozen air. Yeah, that'll hold him, Happy. Hey, he's just standing there like a statue. Let's go out and bring him into the ship. He's harmless now. <laughs> well, what's funny, huh? He, he thought he was hot stuff, but now he'll have to be defrosted. <laughs> <laughs>
We'll be back with an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story in just a moment. Say, gang, did you ever hear the robot mastermind work? It's the amazing Space Patrol machine with a mechanical brain. It knows the answer to everything. Now listen while I ask it some questions. What's the only hot cereal Buzz Corey ever eats? The hot wheat cereal that helps to supercharge him. Instant Ralston. Right, Instant Ralston. The hot super cereal that helps to supercharge you. And when you want a hot cereal that's really delicious, what do you ask for? Instant Ralston. Right, Instant Ralston. And when the morning's cold and you want to warm up your motor? Instant Ralston. Yep, the robot mastermind is right on the beam. So remember to get supercharged, eat a good breakfast with... Instant Ralston. Hey, the robot mastermind answered for me. Instant Ralston. I, I can't stop it. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. But the robot mastermind has the right idea, so get it today. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy have been locked in a building by two criminals who have blocked their only means of escape by pouring sodium-potassium alloy on the stairs. The liquid metal has burst into flame on contact with the air. Commander, the heat is terrible. We're going to face something worse than heat when the automatic fire extinguishing system starts to work. But, sir, the, the water will put the fire out and we can escape. Not with this alloy, Happy. It burns in air, but when water hits it, it explodes. What? The second that spray starts working, this whole building will be blown to bits. Smoke and rockets, unless we find a way out, that means we'll be blown to bits, too. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Lady from Venus, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! <laughs> now, gang, a word from Commander Buzz Corey. Can you answer this question? What group of boys and girls are doing all they can to get grown-ups to donate more blood? These boys and girls are helping their country and having fun, too. They're my Space Patrol blood boosters. And I'd like you to join them today, right now. And here's something else I'd like you to do, too. Tell your mom and pop to buy the Christmas seals that the National Tuberculosis Association mails out. Christmas seals help fight TB. Now just think, TB kills one person every 17 and a half minutes. So join the fight. Buy the beautiful Christmas seals of the National Tuberculosis Association. <laughs> Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper.